Obsessive thoughts. When we think about something we don't want to think about, a lot, much too much. And we don't understand why we think about it so much. And the thought itself is a bit uncomfortable, a bit pressing, and then we don't want to think about it, and we succeed for maybe a few seconds or a few minutes, and it comes again, and it comes again, day in, day out, sometimes for a week, sometimes for our entire life. So what do we do to stop it? Um, the spiritual traditions suggest, and modern psychology, they suggest two different solutions, and rather than choosing one of them, we'll uh, create a synthesis of these two. One is to go to the depth of the obsessive thought, to realize uh, and reshift the deep programming over there. That's one solution, the solution of depth. And the other one is a behavioristic solution. When the obsessive thought comes, do X. Yeah? And um, my experience directly, and also with the people that uh, I coach and teach and so forth, has been to use these two methods at once, and I feel this has given the best results. Yeah? Sometimes people are very selective about choosing one of these, and I consider rather the integration of these two is better. So first of all, how to go deep? What's the, what's the idea? Yeah, I'll give you a few examples from my life. I would have obsessive thoughts about guilt. I feel extremely guilty. I don't know since when, but I don't think I felt guilty when I was four, but I think by the time I was 10, I was pretty, feeling pretty guilty. And uh, up to somewhere in my 20s, where um, in a retreat in the mountains, I was in silence for, for a month. As one of the things I was doing, I took guilt. And I would look very, very deeply to think, why am I having so much guilty thoughts? You know, am I such a horrible human being? What's, what's the deal with that? And I evoked uh, Tara, for those who know, and I was doing, uh, I think, half an hour a day of meditation, diving into the essence of it. So the idea when you dive deep is not to blabber too much about what the guilt is, but to search for the root, to search for the root. What the, okay, these are the five, ten thoughts that I normally have about guilt, but why do I have them? Why do I have them? And I would dive deeper and deeper, and I discovered that um, I feel guilty because I think this will help me to improve myself. And I'm not willing to let go of the thoughts of guilt, even they are very unpleasant, and they drag me down, because I think if I let go of the guilty thoughts, I let go of self-improvement. And somewhere deep in my programming, as I went deep, it took a few weeks. I remember I was sitting or walking up the snow, and I had the, uh, that realization after the meditation. Started doing, and then as walking in the snow, it came uh, like that. I realized that I can continue to consciously self-improve without feeling guilty that these two that were interwined, they can be disconnected. And of course, I could not let go of my guilty thoughts because I don't want to let go of self-improvement. I don't want to let go of transformation and of growth. So uh, I would not let go of obsessive guilty thoughts because somewhere inside of me they were hooked. So I had to dive deep enough into my consciousness and, you know, like a scuba diver, <laughs> and unhook these two. Also, lustful thoughts, sexual thoughts. I would have so much, just strange sexual thoughts. So, so, so much, up to, up to my 30s, somewhere in my 30s. And then I looked at these thoughts, as, why do I think so much about sexuality? Well, I think about when I shower, so many of these thoughts. When I do this, when I do that. All these continuous, a lot, a lot, a lot of sexual thoughts about this, about that, completely, I, I couldn't understand. Diving deep into that, I discover that in the essence of these sexual thoughts, there is this feeling that if I fulfill this sexual fantasy, I will be saved. There is eternal salvation in that. And then I just realized, really, this eternal. And I realized there are two different things. They got hooked up inside of me. And of course I'm searching for salvation. Absolutely. And of course I'm searching for transformation. But then I would think, okay, all the times that I did fulfill uh, some sexual fantasies, well, am I saved? 
I fulfilled so many. No, not really. What did it actually give me? Well, it gives a certain spark of life. It's very nice, it's very beautiful. When there is love, when there is real love, it's absolutely amazing. But that's another thing. I don't have loving fantasies, I have sexual fantasies. So, when I had sex, it didn't give me much. And for sure today, one year, 10 years, 20 years later, it left me with nothing. So I dissociate. No salvation in that. So this is the going in depth. When there is an obsessive thought, it means there is a, it's an indicator that deep down there is a miswiring. And then how do you get to the miswiring? Follow the obsessive thoughts to the root. It's like if you would go on a terrain and then on some land and you would see some uh, water bursting out. Then you know that somewhere deep in the pipe, the, one of the pipes broke. How will you find the pipe? You start digging and follow the water. If the water goes diagonally, you go diagonally. If the water goes straight down, you go straight down, you will find the pipe. Same. If there is an obsessive thought, brother, sister, you have a broken pipe somewhere. Go down to the depth of your being and fix it. One solution, as we said, going very much in depth, following the water, entering the pipe, Fixing. Fixing the programming as dissociating guilt from self-improvement, dissociating some gross sexual fantasies with salvation. This is just what happened to me. For each one, we have our different uh, pipes, different piping system and different broken pipes. The second method that I suggest to be done immediately and simultaneously with that one is when the obsessive thought comes, do X. So, when, in my case, a guilty thought would come, I would say to myself, for example, I just want self-improvement. I don't want self-sabotage of guilt. Or if I would feel, um, I don't know what, um, obsessive with a certain anxiety, because I also have obsessive anxiety thoughts, anxious thoughts sometimes. And I'd say, okay, I don't need that anymore. Then what we can do is like this. You set a date with your anxiety, your guilt, your worry, and you say, I can meet you daily at 9, 9 p.m. We meet 10 minutes and I think about it. Or I meet you weekly, Tuesday at 4.30. We meet and we think about it. And then we concentrate all our worrisome thoughts then, all our anxious thoughts, all our sexual fantasies, whatever. Do it then. And then you sit and you write down the essence of it. You think the thoughts consciously. But it's not enough. So together with setting a date with the obsessive thoughts, the suggestion in many of the scriptures starting, already hinted with the Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, is to do something wonderful which is the opposite. You have an anxious thought, remember the state of courage. Remember the state of love. If you have uh, some kind of spiritual practice you can do, for example, listening to your breath. What I would do often, I would listen to seven breaths. I would uh, have this obsessive thought, and then I say, oh, very good that you remind me, I listen to seven breaths. Or I remember my heart, I remember love. You can place your hand on your heart for a few moments and remember the state of love. Or if you have a mantra, you repeat that mantra. Or an affirmation. Every time you have an obsessive thought telling you you are very bad, you say, thank you, bad thought, for coming. I'll meet you next Tuesday at 5. But now that you arrive, you remind me my affirmation. I am full of confidence, acceptance, love, and light. I am selfless, happy, and joyous. Every time the obsessive thought comes, you bring a conscious thought. Because you can always think a thought. One thought you can think, one action, repeat the mantra, 30 seconds, do seven breaths. Every time an obsessive thought comes, you do that. And you will see, it will kind of lose hope after some time. And if it doesn't, never mind. You remember 50 times a day you do positive affirmation. 50 times a day you remember to say your mantra. And then once a day, once a week, three times a week, you sit with a little notebook, 
take a little phone like I have here and you record yourself consciously thinking, wow, I'm so anxious about what my boss told me. I'm so anxious that I will be lonely. I'm feeling so guilty about that. But then you listen to it consciously and it doesn't eat you up as an obsession. So integrating these two methods, very simple method, can be life-changing. And it was and is life-changing for me and for many of our students and many of the people that have applied these methods. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content on spirituality, tantra and more. And if you want to sign up for our online classes or for our retreats, you can see our website on the description below.